This video discusses in detail about performance appraisal. About definition of the term. According to Flipko, a prominent personality in the field of human resources, performance appraisal is the systematic, periodic and an impartial rating of an employee's excellence in matters pertaining to his present job and his potential for a better job. According to Flippo, performance appraisal is nothing but a rating of an employee. This rating has to be systematic, periodic and impartial. What is he rated? It is a rating of employee's excellence in the matters pertaining to his present job or current position and also it rate his potential for a better job. Coming to objectives of performance appraisal. There are four fold objectives. Number one, work related objectives. It include to provide a control of the organization on the work to be done by the workers. Second, to improve efficiency of the work done by the employees. Third, to help in assigning work and plan future work assignment. And finally, to carry out job evaluation. These are the job related objectives of performance appraisal. First, category. Second, career development objectives of performance appraisal include to identify strong and weak points, thereby finding remedies for weak points through training. So, identify where training is necessary. Second, to determine career potential of an employee. Third, to plan developmental assignments like promotion or lateral promotion, etc. And also to plan career goal or advanced studies of concerned worker. These are the career development objective. The second part of performance appraisal. The third set of objectives are related to communication. That is, to provide adequate feedback on performance, to clearly establish goals, that is, what is expected of members of a team, then to provide counseling and job satisfaction through open discussion on performance, and lastly, to let employees assess where they stand within the organization in terms of their performance. So to communicate all these aspects of performance, we need a tool and that tool is the performance appraisal. The fourth set of related to administrative control. To serve as a basis for promotion and demotion by the top level management, performance appraisal serve as a basis for allocating incentives, to serve as a base for determining transfers of the employee, and also, it is served as a base for termination in case of reduction of the staff. These are the administrative objectives of performance appraisal. So, the objectives of performance appraisal can be employee related, career related, administrative related, and communication related. Coming to nine principles of performance appraisal system. Single employee should be rated by two evaluators. There must be continuous and personal observation. The rating should be done by immediate superior of any subordinate. A separate department may be created for effective implementation of performance appraisal process. Next one. Rating should be conveyed to the concerned employee. At least plus point has to be identified one. And at the same time, minus point should not be highlighted too much. The management should create confidence in the minds of employees through performance appraisal process. The standard for each job should be determined by the management before implementation of the performance appraisal system. Then the tool used for each job should be according to the nature of the job. These are the nine principles behind performance appraisal system. About characteristics of effective performance appraisal system. Each tool of the appraisal system 
should reflect philosophy, purpose and objective of an organization. It must be based on clear purpose. Before the appraisal process, there is clear job description and based on the job description, there should be standards developed. Each appraisal system should use proper appraisal tool. There must be trained evaluators who are knowledgeable enough to use the already developed tool. The entire appraisal process has to be communicated to the workers concerned. There must be full support of the top management and the appraisal process has to be fair and productive. Next we will see about process of performance appraisal. It is a six step process. Setting standard step one. Step two communicating standard. Step three measuring standard. Four comparing standard. Five discussing results and finally taking corrective action. Number one establishing performance standard as the step one. The performance appraisal process begins with setup of standards for appraising the performance of employees. Setup of standards in the, in the sense predetermined criteria based on which the performance is evaluated. Second, communicate the standard. Already developed criteria are communicated to the concerned employees so that they will come to know what is expected from them or what type of performance is expected out of them. Third step, measurement of the actual performance by the employees. To measure actual performance, we need a right technique or method. Also, identify internal and external factors that influence the measurement of performance and collect the information based on the technique that was selected. After measuring actual performance, it is compared with the standards that are developed already. By comparing it with the standards, we will come to know any deviation. That is, whether the deviation is positive or negative. Or simply, we can identify whether the employee's performance is up to the mark or below the mark. And the fifth step, the result is communicated to the employee concerned and it is discussed with them. Along with the deviation, the reason behind them are also analyzed and discussed between the writer or the evaluator and the worker. And lastly, corrective actions are taken for better performance of the employees. Examples of corrective measures include training, coaching, counseling, advice, refresher courses, delegation of authority, etc. This helps in the improvement of employees' performance in the future. The final product of performance appraisal process is the performance evaluation report. It falls under five levels. Number one, that is the highest level, level five, it is the outstanding performance. Next, level 4, that is exceeds the expectation. Level 3, we will say the performance of the employee is competent. Level 2, the employee is minimally successful and the base level is unsatisfactory level of performance of the employee. With this evaluation report, the performance process is completed. Now we will see the different methods or technique of appraising performance. The technique falls under two categories, traditional methods and modern methods. In the traditional methods, we have confidential report, essay method, trade ranking method, paired comparison method, forced distribution method, graphic rating scale, checklist method, critical incident method, group appraisal method, and field review method. In the second category, modern methods, there is assessment center, human resource accounting method, behaviorally anchored rating scales, 
management by objectives or MPO and 360 degree evaluation system. We will see little details about each of this method. First about traditional method. Under traditional method, the first one is essay appraisal method. It is also called free form method. It involves description about the performance of an employee by his superior. The superior of the employee just write the description as he or she feels. It is a purely subjective based method. Second is straight ranking method. This is one of the oldest and simplest technique of performance appraisal. Here the appraiser or the evaluator rank the employees from best to the poorest on the basis of their overall performance. So just to simply the employee is ranked based on his overall performance. That is like one star, two star, up to five star. The third method is paired comparison. Here each employee is compared with all others in pairs. As you can see here, if there are four employees, namely A, B, C, and D, then A is compared with B, B is with C, C with D, D with A. Then the number of times an employee is judged better than the other determine his rank. If an employee, if A is judged better compared to others four times, then A ranks first. Similarly, if B ranks the highest number, or if B is judged better than the others in the team, then B ranks first. So number of times, if an employee is rated highest, he ranks first in the paired comparison method. Each member is compared with the other in pairs. That is called a paired comparison. Fourth traditional method is called a checklist method. As you can see in this image, in the checklist method, there is a number of statements which are related to the job the employee is performing. Then towards each statement, you can see whether it is yes or no. If that particular statement is positive in the worker, S is given or S is marked. And if there is absence of statement, no is marked. Then the total score is calculated and a rank is given to the employee. Fifth method, critical incident method or technique. Here, the evaluator rate the employee on the basis of critical events that have occurred when the person is on the job and how that employee behaved during those critical incidents, whether there is positive behavior or negative behavior. Next method is the field review. In this method, the senior member of human resource department or a training officer discusses and interview the supervisors to evaluate and rate their respective subordinate. A person of the human resource department or a particular training officer discusses the performance level of the subordinate with his concerned supervisor so that the training officer or the senior member will get an evaluation. Next technique, graphic rating scale. As the name suggests, it is a scale or it has a minimum value and a maximum value. You can see here, poor is the minimum and excellent is the maximum value. Then similar to checklist, there are a number of statements about the job the employee is performing. Then in the checklist we have seen there is only yes or no, whether it is present or absent. Here we can see that statement whether it is poor, fairly poor, fairly good, good or excellent. So whatever is present in the employee regarding the statement, he will be evaluated. For example, in terms of attendance, the employee is fairly good. In terms of behavior towards subordinate, fairly good. Sincerity to the job, good. Dependability to the person, excellent. That is what graphic ratings 
scale. Next method is forced distribution. In forced distribution, there are three classification. The upper 20% is called as A employees or A players. They will decide the fate of the organization. They are the highly performing employees or outstanding employees. The middle level is the 70% that is the B employees. They are the moderate level performance. And the last, the ground level is the 10%. They are the C players. They contribute minimum to the production of the organization. Then the rater chooses the appropriate person or category an employee belong according to his discretion. This is called a forced distribution. In forced distribution, the employees are placed in categories or classification, whether it is the upper 20, middle 70 or in the lower 10 percentage. In the previous traditional methods, they are not placed in any classification. They are singly evaluated based on their performance using a particular tool. Here they are placed in a category. So far we have seen common traditional methods of performance appraisal. Coming to modern methods of appraisal. In the modern method, first one, assessment centers. Generally, employees are given an assignment to the job that they would be expected to perform if promoted. The trained evaluators observe and evaluate employees as they perform the assigned job and are evaluated on job related characteristics. Assessment centers are used to evaluate an employee if he, he or she has to be promoted to a higher position. Then in such situation, an assignment similar to a role in the higher position is given to an employee. Trained evaluators evaluate this particular person. Then they decide whether promotion is required to this person or not. This is about assessment centers. Second method, behaviorally anchored rating scale or BARS. B -A -R -S. It is a combination of graphic rating scale and critical incident method that we have seen in the traditional system. Then this method consists of a predetermined critical areas of the job or a set of behaviors that are describing important qualities of the job. Then an employee's actual job behavior is judged against these already mentioned behavioral statement and comparing the behavior with the bar. You can see an example of bar scale here. This scale applies to performance evaluation of a customer service representative. So these are the five behavioral specific statements that are related to the job of a customer service person. Then this is the numerical scale and this is the graphical scale. Then each statement is evaluated and given a score. For example, argued with the customer about suitability of requested product, the score is 1 and the rating is unsatisfactory. Then used positive phrases to explain the product, the score is 5 and the level is outstanding. Then the total score is calculated and this is the performance of the employee according to bar scale. Next modern method is human resource accounting method. In this method, the employee is judged in terms of cost and contribution of the employee. They are judged based on the cost of employee and his contribution to the company. In this method, the cost means expense incurred by the company on compensation of employee, recruitment and selection cost, induction and training cost, etc. Then contribution include the total value added by the employee in monetary terms to the company or the productivity of the person in the company is the contribution and the cost incurred or expense incurred is the cost of the employee. The performance is equal to difference between cost and the contribution. Cost minus contribution is the performance. Ideally, 
the contribution of the employee should be greater than the cost incurred on them. This is about human accounting system. Fourth method is 360 degree performance appraisal method. Then here the employee is evaluated by his superior, by the suppliers, by the team members, by the employee subordinate, by the employee's peers and the employee's customers. So from six different directions, the employee is evaluated in addition to the self-appraisal by the employee. The essential four components of this system is self-appraisal, superior appraisal, subordinate appraisal and peer appraisal. In addition to this four system, there can be appraisal by customer and suppliers, also by team members. Last method in the modern technique is management by objectives, abbreviated as MBO. In this system, the goals are mutually set by the top management and the workers. First, there is mutual setting of organizational goals. Then there is specific setting of objectives between employee and the management. Then these objectives, whether they are met or not, will be continuously monitored by the management. Then performance evaluation is taken. That will be communicated to the concerned employee. Then there will be reward or punishment based on the appraisal and this system will continue. Here comes the end of different techniques of performance appraisal that is traditional methods and modern methods about some common errors in writing performance evaluation. First one, halo effect. This is the tendency to give an overall rating based on a single trait. Second, recency effect. This is nothing but based on the recent incidents or events an employee is given an overall score. Third, stereotyping. This is an overall rating based on the general impression, not actual measurement. Fourth one, partiality. Next, distribution error. This is a tendency of an evaluator to give rating or evaluation either in the extreme for everyone or below average for everyone or everyone is made in the middle. There is no even distribution of performances. Next, similarity error. One is compared with the other and the rating is given. And the last is proximity error. That is everyone is given more or less same mark or same evaluation. Not their real score. So these are the some of the common errors committed by evaluators. Coming to obstacle to effective performance system. One obstacle is lack of support from the top management. Which is very essential for success of the every evaluation system. And next is resistance from the part of the evaluator. They resist because performance appraisal demands too much of supervisor's efforts in terms of time, paperwork, periodic supervision, etc. And lastly, in the slide we will see benefits of performance appraisal system. Performance appraisal offers benefits to the individual then manager, supervisor or team leader and finally the organization as such. These benefits can be raises, merit, pay, bonus etc. for the individual. Then for the organization, personal decision related to promotion, transfer, dismissal based on the performance evaluation. Then for the supervisor, they are able to identify training needs of subordinate. And finally, it contributes to research as well. Finally, the role of nurse administrator in performance appraisal. Manage and supervise the work of others directly and through subordinate managers. Second, appraise the performance or involve in performance appraisal process. Third, counsel and train employees directly and through subordinate managers. Fourth, monitors smooth functioning of performance appraisal in the department. Understand, interpret and apply laws, rules, 
regulations and policies related to performance appraisal, develop and implement disciplinary action as necessary, collect, interpret and evaluate narrative and other data pertaining to performance appraisal. This is the end of this long video. Thanks for watching.